Hi and welcome to this lecture on the microscopic anatomy of bone tissue. In this lecture we will look at the connective tissue of the bone, the bone matrix, and the cells that they are composed of. Now the bone connective tissue is the primary component of bone. It is often called the osseous connective tissue and it is composed of several cells and an extracellular matrix, a very dense extracellular matrix. Now the cells of bone consist of four types. They are the osteoprogenitor cells, these are stem cells. The osteoblasts, the blasts will build bone. The osteocytes, the osteocytes will help maintain bone in normal everyday activity. And lastly we have the osteoclasts in which they cleave or destroy bone. It is termed res bone resorption. Now here is a figure showing the development of bone cells. They start out with osteoprogenitor cells. Osteoprogenitor cells are cells that are stem cells that are derived from the mesenchyme in the development of an individual. They are present in the endosteum and periosteum of a bone. They can develop into osteoblasts or osteoclasts. Now if they develop into osteoblasts, these are the, the cells that will build bone. Now they are often positioned side by side on the bone surfaces and they will synthesize and secrete osteoid. Now osteoid is the organic component of bone. This organic component will later calcify and as it calcifies this osteoblast will become trapped inside of the bone itself. Once it becomes trapped it will differentiate into an osteocyte. So the osteoblast turns into an osteocyte and the osteocyte will maintain the bone matrix around it. Now I mentioned osteoclasts. They are a large multinuclear phagocytic cell. Phagocytic meaning that they eat other things. This is through the process of phagocytosis. It is derived from fused bone marrow cells. Now they have a ruffled border and this ruffled border is to increase surface area exposed to bone. This allows the osteoclast to be more efficient in bone resorption. They are often located within a depression on the bone surface that is called a resorption lacuna. Here is a figure showing the osteoclast in the resorption lacunae. Here you can see the ruffled border of the osteoclast facing the extracellular matrix of the bone. And this is in the end osteum, which is the lining in the medullary cavity. The osteoclast has a lot of lysosomes that contain enzymes, and between the enzymes and the secretion of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid will break down the inorganic component of bone and then the lysosomes will break down the organic component of bone. When you're looking at the organic component of bone, that is the osteoid as I mentioned earlier, it consists of a collagen protein, a semi-solid ground substance of proteoglycans, and glycoproteins. Now glycoproteins is a carbohydrate, that's the glyco portion and a protein together. The osteoid gives the bone tensile strength by resisting stretching so it is providing strength along the long axis of the bone and it contributes to bone flexibility. Believe it or not your bones will slightly flex to help withstand stress. In addition to the organic components, you also have the inorganic components of bone. Now this is mainly calcium phosphate and it does interact with calcium hydroxide to get hydroxyapatite. You will see hydroxyapatite in a lot of supplements. In addition to the calcium phosphate, you also have other substances incorporated. 
it acts as a repository for these. That is calcium carbonate, which is different than calcium phosphate, sodium, and magnesium ions, to name a few. Now these inorganic components are only deposited once the collagen fibers are already laid down. And after they are laid down, it will harden the matrix and then give the bones that rigidity that we are familiar with. A key idea to understand is that the hardness or flexibility of bones is based on the ratio or proportion of organic to inorganic substances. When it's the correct proportion, that allows for the best functioning. That maintains the correct flexibility and or strength of bones. Now if you have a disease where you lose the protein, that results in brittle bones such as brittle bone disease. You also have insufficient calcium which is building the inorganic component and that will result in soft bones such as bow leggedness. Now when you look at the general process of bone formation it does begin with the secretion of osteoid. Keep in mind that the osteoid is the organic component of bone. Then you get the inorganic crystals or the calcification of hydroxyapatite crystals that form after, in between the collagen fibers. Now the process does require vitamin D. Vitamin D is known to enhance calcium absorption from the GI tract and it requires vitamin C which is needed for collagen formation. If you are familiar with history, during the times of sailing across the ocean from Europe to America, one of the problems they had was scurvy. And they did not have enough vitamin C in the diet on the ship, and that led to incorrect bone formation. Now keep in mind that bone formation does require calcium and phosphate for calcification. If you don't have those, it will not occur. Finally, bone resorption. In bone resorption, we are breaking down bone to pull the minerals back out. The bone matrix is destroyed by substances that are released from the osteoclasts. Keep in mind, clasts cleave bone. You get proteolytic enzymes released from the lysosomes. That is breaking down the organic part, or the osteoid. And then the calcium and phosphate is dissolved by the hydrochloric acid and as it does that you will then pull the minerals out of the bone and those cells will reabsorb them. This typically occurs when blood calcium levels are low. Here is a figure showing bone itself. In the first one which is here you can see the collagen fiber orientation. Notice that they run in a spiral or helical fashion and they are opposite as you look at each concentric lamellae. The purpose of this is to increase the structural strength of bone because you create an overlapping of fibers from one concentric lamellae to the next. Here is a single unit of bone which is an osteon. You can see the concentric lamellae which would be the rings of the bullseye so to say. You have the central canal in the middle or the haversian canal. It contains the nerve, the arteries and veins, and you also have the canaliculi, which these are spaces that allow material to pass from this lacunae that houses the osteocyte to the next concentric lamellae ring.